Hello, and uh, welcome to the KX Country Clubhouse. I'm Bob Say from KX96, and joining us in the clubhouse today is one Aaron Goodwin. And Aaron, I'm going to tell you why I've got this Montreal Canadiens hat on, because when you live in the greater Toronto area, or greater Toronto Hamilton area, with all, surrounded by Maple Leaf fans, when you're a Montreal fan, today's a good day. Today is a very good day for the Montreal fans. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so are you a hockey fan? Yeah, I totally. I grew up playing hockey. Um, that was, you know, if I had another dream when I was a kid, I, I dreamed of playing hockey in the NHL. But um, but I found out very quickly. I mean, I'm 5'6", so I found out very quickly that uh, they just taught the big boys to skate. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, then my love for country music and playing on stage took over. So... I've, uh, I think I made the right career choice. Let's just put it that way. Well, we're glad you did, as it turns out. <clears throat> so uh, what was your team growing up? Um, I grew up in northern Alberta, so um, I, I was kind of always a little bit of an Oiler fan, and my family were big Oiler fans. Uh, I was born in 85, so um, it was kind of right in their heyday. Um, but but uh, growing up, I was also a big Red Wings fan. My dad was a fan of the Red Wings and um, those were that was the days of uh, Lidstrom and Fedorov and Iserman and that whole dynasty so um, I kind of lived through that it was big big Sergei Fedorov fan so. Well let's talk a little bit about uh, growing up in uh, Spirit River Alberta population maybe a thousand. Something um, like that yeah. I remember years ago, I, I spoke with uh, Lynn Williams, who was an international middle distance runner for Canada, won a bronze medal at the LA Olympics mm. in 80, 84. And she grew up in Regina and back in the 60s and 70s population, a little over 100,000 maybe. And I remember right. her telling me once that she said, I never could dream as a little girl in my neighborhood in Regina, Saskatchewan, that one day I'd be standing on an Olympic podium receiving a bronze medal. So I'm wondering what were your dreams in terms of, aside from hockey, uh, what were your dreams in uh, Spirit River, Alberta? And could you ever have imagined that you'd have the career that you're having now? Uh, no, and I, and I also, um, you know, I, I'll add to that. I, I also had nobody that thought I would. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of I didn't have a lot of hope when I was a younger kid. I was diagnosed with uh, uh, ADHD at a very early age, and um, uh, everything everything was pretty much a struggle for me growing up. So, um, wh whether that was school or uh, you know having a temper on the ice, or um, you know, so I always kind of I always had a ton of challenges, but um, I had really great parents, and I think my mom and dad. Uh, um, did their best to um, find something that I could focus on, you know. And uh, so when I was able to kind of jump in, I picked up a guitar. My my family plays guitar and around the campfire, never professionally, um, just for the love of music. So that's kind of where I come from. And um, so I learned how to play guitar. I was about 12 years old playing my grandpa's KRE guitar. And uh uh, I'd start playing around the campfire with my uncles and aunties, my, my mom and dad. And it just sort of, it kind of snowballed. I think, I, could, I think the real moment for me was um, the first time I was on stage. I remember feeling more at home up there than I did anywhere else in real life, you know? And, and even to this day, I think that's true. I think when I get on stage, it's uh, I've sort of learned how to do everything else. But when I get on stage, that just feels like home to me. It feels like where I'm supposed to be. And so, um, so it's such a you know. I but I never would have dreamed. I mean, I you know, the amount of challenges that I had growing up, I certainly had a lot of things against me. And um, but I always had uh, a little bit of tunnel vision. And once I kind of decided once I what I was going to do, I just went and did it. And um, it, you know, and I've always just kind of been that guy and just, if that's what I want to do. I'm just going to go do it. And, and, uh, so I, it's worked out for me, but I'm, I'm very grateful. So, well, I want to pick up on that a little bit because, uh, my oldest son has a friend who uh, has ADHD and it was just a matter of him finding his passion, which was flying. And now he's a pilot for a major airline. And, right. uh, I guess really that's what you're saying is, and it's true for everybody, I guess, but 
especially for people who have ADHD, boy, if they can uh, find out what their passion is and just grab onto it and hang totally. on for dear life, right? Totally. It's a, it's a, the ability to hyper focus is, um, I think for ADD and ADHD kids is, is an, is an amazing thing for when, when I was really young, it was hockey cards. I mean, I used to buy as many hockey cards as I could. And then I would, I would, uh, like organize them in different ways. And like, I, it's just something to focus on. And so, um, when I found, um, music and I found, uh, uh, one of the things that I focused on, I buy a new CD every uh, uh, every Tuesday. Tuesday was the new music days back then. And I would buy a new CD every week and I would find out that there's these songwriters that wrote these songs for artists. And I really became infatuated with that. And, um, and I was like, well, maybe I can write songs. So I started trying to write songs and I seemed to have a knack for it. And that seemed to be my way into, um, you know, getting back on stage, which was always my goal. And, um, and I found out very quickly I could write, I could write songs. And then I started taking trips to Nashville and then just became obsessed with coming back as much as possible and, and trying to learn how to, you know, write songs in this town and, and how to make things um, marketable and how to, you know, and I just learned a ton and I was very lucky, you know, when I first moved here two years into it, I got a, a Luke Bryan cut after making trips for living there for two years and making trips for six years, you know, I, I got this cut and that sort of changed everything for me. And I was able to kind of, um, you know, uh, garner that type of success. It was a big song on a, it was a big record. I should say it was a song on a big record. And, and uh, it really just changed, like you know, my trajectory for my whole career. And uh, you know, I've been I've been very fortunate. So, I talked to uh, Stephen Lee Olson about that a little bit when his song uh, "Blue Ain't Your Color" with Keith Urban came out. And I asked him, when you have that somebody like Luke Bryan record one of your songs, that has to give you so much confidence in your it's ability. Totally, totally. It's the most uh, it's the most validating thing that could ever happen to anyone that writes songs i mean i think i wouldn't be here with without all the artists that i looked up to you know when i was in the 90s i was a huge tracy bird fan and clay walker fan and who i've written songs with and uh you know i like these are the guys that i like idolized growing up and so um and i remember i was a luke fan when luke first came out with all my friends saying i had that first record and um, just kind of watching his career um, at that time that that album was just at the peak of right where he you know lives and um, he was really kind of turning over into that giant superstar thing and so to have a song on that record that was uh, just so big uh, you know uh, it sold 500,000 copies in the first week and um, you know, it was such an exciting time, but, you know, and, and the most validating thing, you know, it's, it's, I look up to anybody who's able to do this for a living and make a good living at it is somebody that I look up to. It's, um, you know, I certainly, um, am grateful that Luke cut that song. And like I say, what it did for me was just allow me to keep going and which is so huge in this town. I mean, so many people don't get to keep going and, so I'm very grateful that, you know, he got that song and, and I was able to be a part of all that. So, When it comes to country music, you're, you're, you're a singer, you're a musician, you're a performer. But do you feel at your core that you are a songwriter? Yeah, I think I, I think some people um, have. I mean, I think I remember growing up and having um, I had a lot more success communicating um, how I felt through a song than I did, um, you know, using words, which over the years, I think I've gotten a little better at, but I'm not sure. Um, but for me, it was just all about like, I could articulate what I was feeling in a song more so than I could doing anything else. So I think in that regard that it, it totally is, um, you know, but I really see myself as, as, you know, an artist, I, you know, I wouldn't be able to, um, I, I find even the songs that other people have cut, um, I'm very fortunate to have, but they, um, they're, you know, they're, that wasn't exactly what I was doing as an artist. And so I think for me, um, be having, having a channel and a way to put songs out and, um, 
uh, is kind of what has always kind of been the ultimate goal for me. And I've always, you know, as, as many people will say, like, I, I, one of the challenges was the songwriting got me in, but then I was a songwriter, you know, it was like people had kind of pegged me as, you know, well, he just writes songs and, and he'll do great at that. And I was like, well, yeah, but that's not why I do it. So it's taking a little bit of time to convince, um, you know, uh, you know, me, myself and the world that, that, uh, you know, I'm worthy of being an artist, um, you know, in country music, it, it's, uh, um, that has been the biggest journey for me, for sure. So let's talk about some, uh, we're going to get to some new music that's coming out as we speak this Friday on June the yes. 4th. But, be, but before we get to that, I will, I, I want to ask you about Lonely Drum and what that song has meant to you and your career. Is it kind of a, one of those life changing moments? Lonely drum, lonely drum is just is is the anomaly. It, it, I mean, you don't you don't write. I mean, you write songs every day, and you you get. I mean, I do anyway. And I think like you get certain feelings on certain songs. I've never had a feeling as strong as lonely drum. Um, after writing a song, I've never in my life have I. You know, I've written a lot of songs, and there's times where I get close, but nothing has ever kind of that moment when that song is finished um um i get excited about a lot of things and a lot of songs but it was more than excitement there was something bigger happening and we all felt it you know we all knew it uh and then it it was it took four years for me to finally cut it and put it on a record i mean it's just the the how long it took for all of that i mean after being pitched to every major artist and and you know and it just it never worked out for anybody else which i mean i always think it was kind of meant to be my thing but um i mean obviously it was it's done so many amazing things it's our current single here in the u.s and um just based on the success that's had um in canada and the rest of the world um it, it for me it's a no-brainer to to have this song kind of break into the u.s market um on u.s radio um uh, which we're doing really well on the music grow indicator side of things. And uh, we're slowly going to major market. And um, it's just one of those songs, man. It's, it's when we play it live, uh, there's nothing like it, uh, especially in Canada. Um, it's just like, we play it live. Even when we play it in places that people don't know it, it's, it's really amazing to watch what happens. Uh, it's just an undeniable groove, I think, and people just have to get up and dance to it and, and pretend to sing along with it, even though they don't know the words is my favorite thing. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's just a crazy thing. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't explain that, what that song does. It's just, it, like I say, it's bigger than myself and uh, bigger than the guys in the band and all of us. It's and we all see it every time we play it. It's it's just a remarkable thing. I remember uh, years ago, uh, I was working out in uh, Vancouver at a Country Station there, and uh, Eric Church was one of my favorite artists, and he wasn't really resonating with our audience at the time. And I went on the air and I said, "You guys aren't getting Eric Church." but we're going to keep playing them until you do basically. And I'm wondering if you mentioned you were pitching lonely drum and you weren't, uh, was that your attitude? Because you said there, you knew there was something about that song, but clearly other people weren't getting it. Uh, did you lose hope at one point or did you start thinking, am I, did we miss something here? Well, I mean, I think, I think it's only natural to kind of have doubts about it. And, and I've certainly, I mean, I think I have doubts about a lot of things that, that, even that we do sometimes it's like well i'm not entirely sure that that's the right but i think the the biggest thing with lonely drum is that it never lost its shine and even to this day um it is it just it's never lost it it's so you know uh, when when we put that i mean I, i've got a hats off to canadian country radio because uh because they got behind it and in, in the way that you need to get behind it it's a song that's meant to be played over and over and over again it has no it doesn't stop you know it's got no burn is what is, is a phrase that we use a lot and um and it shows because it continues to stream um now that we've got it in the u.s the stream everything is up you know and it's just it, it just keeps going this song's been out for four and a half years or so four years or something so it's it's the thing about it is like yes you do have to keep 
I keep, I kept believing in that feeling. I've lost relationships over this song, you know, where people felt it wasn't what I needed to do. And, um, and I just knew that it was, um, when I, uh, one of the biggest things that had happened early on in my career, when, when, uh, I signed with Warner Canada, um, is I played a bunch of songs for Johnny Reed and Johnny heard Lonely Drum and was like, this is it. Like, this is, this is it. And so, um, which was a big help because I, you know, I'm, have a tremendous amount of respect for Johnny and, and have my whole career. And so when he said that, I was like, then I was like, definitely, I was like, okay, I wasn't wrong. And I didn't lose these relationships for nothing. And, um, you know, and I just kept believing in it and, and man, you guys just played it up there so much. And, and it's, it's just, it's changed my whole life. That song has done so many things and will continue to it. Uh, I'm always blown away. I, I, I was in like, literally just case in point, I was in Connecticut on Friday night and um, playing for a, a PD at a station um, in New London, Connecticut. And we're at a, we're at a campsite and where he kind of set up this show where everybody could be safe and all this stuff. And, and me and my drummer went out there and his wife come up to me and she was like, um, she takes line dancing with a group of ladies. And um, she's like, Hey, I'm here hanging out with like Aaron Goodman, like, um, and the girl texts her back and she's like, oh, we just danced to Lonely Drum. Yeah. It's the craziest thing. It happens everywhere we go. Uh, and that's something that you don't plan, that you can't plan. You know, it just happens and it's just so rewarding. So it's such a such a cool thing. So We talked earlier about uh, some new music coming our way on Friday, June the 4th. So Aaron, tell us about the new song. What's going on? Yeah, I'm so excited. This song called Boy Like Me and... Uh, <clears throat> we're, I always, I've been telling this story quite a bit, so I've gotten good at it, but, um, uh, when we were come, when COVID hit, we, we, uh, you know, it's just funny how long it takes things to kind of get rolling. You know, we, we had had some hits on the radio and we, um, you know, we started touring, but we really felt like the touring was going to pick up, uh, even and be even more than it was the year previous um obviously COVID stopped that but musically for us and me and the band um we we really felt like we were finding our stride with it and so I just kind of took the energy of what that show um you know was sort of turning into and I just went and read a bunch of songs and this was a song that um kind of just stuck out like a sore thumb to a lot of people um when we play uh when when we play it for people we demo it up and we played it for people and they were like, oh, man, you can sing along to it. It has like a really great hook. One of my favorite things about it is it has a great hook for an up-tempo song, which I just think is a hard thing to do. And it also has this, you know, long period of time in a three three minute song, which I always love when you're, when, uh, you know, songwriters and artists are able to do that. I think it's a hard thing to do, um, but to make all of that work in one little three minute song is kind of a cool uh, thing. And it's just kind of like where I've been at these days and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty content with life and, and happy. I love going out on the road and playing and uh, coming home to my wife and dogs and then going to do it again. It's just like, I, I feel like I'm in a really great place. And, and I have like n nobody, but uh, you know, country radio up in Canada to, to thank for that. And so this is just a, you know, it's just a product of where I'm at these days. And uh, I think it'll fit so well into that live show where people can sing along and um, have a lot of fun with it. So. By uh, speaking of your dogs, Olive and Telly, I believe yes, uh, yes. are the names. I saw a picture that you posted recently of the two dogs. Boy, they've it looks like they've really been impacted by this pandemic. They're oh, uh, taking yeah. it pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, they're they're living their best life is all they're doing. They uh they I you know, I don't know what it's gonna be like. I, I was gone this weekend and um it's uh i don't know what it's gonna be like the more we go away here because you know we've got some family vacations coming up and and uh but they uh they go stay with grandma most of the time so they love that and um they yeah they're just having a great time they love having us around all the time we love being around them so well i was just gonna say because i have a couple of kids who have dogs and they live on their own and uh their dogs during this pandemic i'm not saying it saved their lives but it certainly uh, helped their mental uh Huge. approach absolutely and it just it's until it's been i can't imagine we had the dogs i came home off the road and uh, the dogs were over at grandma's and i stopped in at the house to 
you know, have a little nap before I had to go back into the studio and, and my dogs weren't there and it, I can't, it just feels so empty when they're not. So I, I can imagine like for us, it was definitely, they're a big reason how we were able to get, get through that. So. Aaron Goodman has been our guest in the KX Country Clubhouse. The uh, new song coming out on Friday, June the 4th. Is so excited. A <laughs> boy like me. Aaron, thanks so much for taking the time. Really fun no talking to you. No problem at all, Bob. Good to see you, and uh, congrats to your Canadians. <laughs> thanks. We'll see how they do against Winnipeg. I'm not so confident <laughs> there, but anyway. Well, hey, I mean, um, you know, the Preds didn't make it past Carolina, so my uh you know i'm a pretty big preds fan and it's it's it was hard to hard to watch that but um you know they had a heck of a year considering so yeah absolutely yeah. all the best aaron good luck with the new song boy like me and we'll talk again thank you so much bob have a great one bye-bye <laughs>